<laughs> Yo, let's see how many people join this, John. It's been a genet. It's been a genet. For sure. Yo, um. Oh. I'm playing the Wii right now. Yo, what up, Marcus? Yo, text me, bro. We need to catch up. Y'all know what we on right now. Y'all know what we're on. I got I got this Wii recently. Literally the best thing. Sorry, I might go out a couple times. Um it's like the best purchase I've made in so long. Hold on, the remote's over here. Uh I got a Wii. Got an Xbox. I'm living life. Um Hey! <laughs> What's up? It's been Quite a minute since I have been on live, been here, talked to you guys. Um, so, man, I don't even know where to start, but I, it's, I hope it doesn't keep going in and out. I'm just going to be playing this. Um... Man, this music is so good. Oh, she gave me a gift. Princess Peach, five one-ups. Uh, would I like them now? No, I don't need them right now. Emergency rations for the Toad Brigade. You hear that? Um, what game are you playing? Super Mario Galaxy. So... My candle studio. Look, guys, um, so here's a little life update, right? Before I start, um, I am not in LA anymore. I don't live there anymore. I have decided that it is best for me right now to be back here in Cleveland. This is, I'm staying with my family and just kind of, um, I don't know, just just to let you guys know where I've been. I'd hate to, like, just dive into it real quick. But, um, I am, you know, the, the, la the last couple years of my life have been very, um, rocky as far as my creative process. There's been a lot of peaks and a lot of valleys. Um, and, you know... I just, yeah, I was in a really not, I've, I'm still like really regaining a lot of like life, you know? And I think that, you know, in order to be creative, you have to have experiences, you have to be inspired. And how do you get inspired? You go through things. And in LA, I wasn't going through a lot of things. It was kind of like the routine of doing the business stuff. And like occasionally I'd have a session, but the session was very business oriented. And it was like, Oh, you got to go and you got to have this in order to for us to put it to this person or whatever. And so I was like, you know what? I'm done with all that. I'm just going to come back here. I'm going to I'm I'm just going to come back here when I'm ready. I'm going to make what I want to make and then when I have something to present, I will present it and we can get it rolling. So, um just to give you guys a little bit of a... I guess I could give y'all a tour, but this is like... This is my pad, yo. This is like... I got my couch. The idea of this... Now, it's not completely done. But the idea is that you guys are... Not you guys specifically, but... It's like you're walking into my brain. So I wanted to make a room... Um, this is like my new bedroom. Um, and... I wanted it to be like you're walking into my brain, basically, is the idea. So, um, I got my couch. I got the TV, games, Wii back there. Uh, I got my room space heater. 
Here's my uh, studio desk. I got my characters and whatnot. I'm about to get shelves, so all this will move up here. But for now, it's all right here. I'm working on some stuff there. This is the this is the bed. Now I just wanted something where you know if I have friends, they can come and they can sit. And obviously, when I sleep, I like will move all this stuff and you know put some stuff over here. But um, yeah, so it's basically everything that's um, inspired me and stuff. But oh yeah, uh, Sonic holds the lighter because I got candles going, candles burning. And, uh, yeah, right here, you know, I got Appa from Last Airbender, Momo from Last Airbender. I have too many Sonics. I got this Sonic, this Sonic, Red Yoshi, Blue Yoshi. This is my first Webkins when I was, uh, must have been in, like, kindergarten. It's a one-up mushroom. Oh, this one's called Patrick the Pup. This was, like, my... I I had this ever since I was like a little kid. Also, this little teddy bear. So I was born in Chicago, so I used to have this when I was like a baby. So I just have that with me. And then I got this Charizard right here from Nintendo, which is fire. Um, ukulele. I got my shoes. The old classic Jan Sport. Um, I got some pictures that need to be put up on the walls. So it's coming together, but, you know, obviously I'm not done. There's a lava lamp right there, but my mom broke the light. So shout out mom. Um, but anyways. Uh, anyways. I want, I don't know what, like, my audience is. I don't really know who, who watches these. I, I see, like, the reactions on Twitter, and I see what you guys say, but honestly, like, I don't know who, at the end of the day, who really gets in these lives and, like, watches me, uh, um, just talk, or what you guys like hearing me talk about, so I'm just, you know, I don't really know what else to update you on. I think, well, one of the things that's been a major change is I've realized, you know, with the whole life thing in order to create I have to be doing other things I have to be inspired I have to live life is uh you know I realize I gotta play basketball again I gotta learn how to cook I gotta um I gotta just do a bunch of different things like pick up other hobbies because if I don't have other hobbies and other things that I'm working towards then I'm only working towards one thing and if I'm only working towards one thing that my whole career is dependent on then that's a dependent funny um then I'm just going to become stressed out and I'm not going to want, and I'm going to feel like every single time I want to do something, it's like a pressure thing. And I think a lot of people just don't understand that, you know, like work isn't supposed to be work. Work is supposed to feel like you're playing. It's supposed to feel like, I don't know, you're just constantly having fun. And I just wasn't constantly having fun. It was always felt like I had to do something like, like, it was required of me to rap and be good at it and all this other stuff. So I'm just back home and working on getting my confidence back and everything. I'm just going through a little recovery, I guess you could say. But that's not to say I, I'm not, I don't have some pretty incredible things lined up for you guys. Um, I have... I got <laughs> there's some there's some really cool things happening um and I won't I won't detail uh what exactly those things are but I've got uh I'm I'm really happy with with where where everything is right now um I w I wish I could say more but I can't um just know that there's some cool stuff and uh Jeez, man. But I, I don't know. I just think it's really important for me to be here. And um, yeah. Oh yeah. Check out my Harry Potter pillow uh, up here. If you, it's one of those ones where you like do the thing. 
Platform nine three quarters. Motherfucker. Um, yeah. All in all, I had to... I had to just... I had to just, like, really think about my habits. I had to think about my... Not had to, like, I still have to. I have to... I'm really trying to... Just, I don't I'm just trying to follow follow the right way of doing things and try to just try to be try to be great and try to like and I realize that there's a lot of things that I still do um you know a lot of times we try to fix people a lot of times we're judgmental of other people if we're on like a path of like goodness and we're trying to do um like if we're trying to do better for ourselves like we're on a journey of like self improvement we see other people not doing not meeting a standard that we hold ourselves to and we like immediately want to judge them and be like well that person's I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. um so yeah i like there's stuff like that there's like i mean there's there's so much i could go on and on but yes i saw a comment that says do you still play your violin i do and i'm taking lessons i'm taking lessons for violin and i'm learning how to play the piano and i'm i'm just i don't i can't here here's the thing um you know there's a there's a j cole line and it says if they don't know your dreams then they can't shoot them down um, and the reason I love that line and that line sticks with me is because a lot of times we get these ideas, right? We have plans, you know, plans for our creativity, plans of making this or doing this or wanting to explore this. But as soon as you, you get, you get that feeling, you get so excited and you just immediately want to tell somebody, right? You want to either tell your best friend or your mom or whoever. And sometimes you want to tell somebody who is not probably the best person to receive that enthusiasm about your idea, right? Um, so you want, it's like, it's almost like you're trying to kill your dream sometimes. It's like you'll tell that person who you know is going to like look at you like you're crazy or like, um, so I learned that I can't put my, ambitions and dreams into the into the public because that gives them the opportunity to be killed and to be um I don't know taken to the ground like let's say you write an amazing you you come up with an idea of like I want to run for school president or whatever and you're like oh my gosh mom I'm gonna run for school president she's like why would you do like then she gives you this like um super like, I don't know, like, negative ass response. And you're just like, oh, you know what? I guess probably shouldn't do that, right? And she, and like, here's the, here's the problem is so many people think in this like analytical business oriented um, mindset. And the truth is like, and the the problem is that a lot of those people will tell you they're like it's just how I am. This is how I am, and it's like it's like I, you need people like me. It's like no, because first of all, you have a left side of your brain, you have a right side of your brain, and there's an artistic side of your brain, and there's a logical side. So we only really need half of you, right? <laughs> we only really need half of all that of all that that you're giving me. Um, when you want to do something, when you want to accomplish something, when you want to take a risk, there are going to be people that want to, um, that, that, that want, that want to express their well-meaning concern about what you're going to do. And it's all well-meaning. It could be your best friend. It could be your teacher. It could be literally anybody. And they're, they all just want your best interest. So they don't want to see you take a risk um, because they wouldn't take a risk or they wouldn't take that risk. And in, it just gets caught up in this really messed up cycle of you think of a great idea, you tell it to someone, it gets killed. You think of another one, you tell someone else, it gets killed. Um, and we gotta, we gotta break that habit. We gotta, 
We got to protect our dreams. We have to protect our artists. We have to work in silence. Um, I did this cameo thing, right? And almost all of you, like literally every other request was about, um, hey, like, can you give me some advice? Can you tell me something um, that I can watch when I'm down, when I'm feeling, um, when I'm not feeling the best? And I kind of gave everyone a pretty similar answer. And what I... And what I was telling everybody was, look, you have to, like, you have this feeling for a reason, right? You're sad, you're angry, you're annoyed, you're whatever. You want to do, it's it's a call to action, right? Like, you, w- I wish that when I was sad, there was something directly, like, like, oh, if I was sad, I could just, like, do this and it would be better. I could do this. But the, the truth is, it, it's all you have a multitude of options for when you're feeling any of these emotions. And what the thing you got to do is figure out a way to express that. Because, you know, when we're feeling these ways, we want to be heard, we want to feel like we're validated, and we want to feel like our emotions are justified, and we're, we're right in feeling that way. And, you know, that can come from, that's why either we express it to a friend, or we express it to this person or this person. But honestly, the most healthy way that I have learned is expressing it creatively. And you don't have to necessarily just like, like, you don't have to like do anything that's like crazy. But I mean, some people work out, some people do this, some people do that. And if you do that and that works for you, cool. But some people are like, some people, um, well, anyways, I don't know where I was going with that, but What I'm trying to get to is whether you want to paint, whether you want, find a way to to express that emotion and and not have you telling somebody it. Because a lot of times, I put this on my story of this guy, Father Mike Schmitz. First of all, he's amazing. You guys should watch his videos. It's a YouTube channel called Ascension Presents. Watch that shit, please. Um, Changed my life. And, you know, he talks about, he was talking about the importance and value of silence and it's such an important thing because you know like it's 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 easy for me in this room right now to distract myself it's easy for me like oh i'm feeling a bad way i'm just going to go play xbox play video games um go whatever it's easy for me to find a way to distract ourselves and what we're really good at as humans are distracting ourselves and we we love to do it because it's we're able to put our emotion and our anger and all that to the side. So when you're feeling some type of way, you need to feel, you need to not distract yourself. You need to uh, confront it directly. Um, and how can you confront it? You can either immediately express it by, like for me, I'd write a verse, I'd write a song, or I draw a picture. I'm no, I'm no painter, I'm no artist, but like if you draw something, whatever that emotion is, is gonna be represented on the page. Um, I may write just paragraphs. I may, like, there's so many things that I could do. Um, And if I don't want to do any of those things, then I find some time to myself and I just turn everything off and I sit in silence. Um, Someone's like, well, that might be weird. Well, it's the thing, well, it's, the thing about it it's not it's not weird it's just it it feels it feels wrong because because here's the problem is when we when we're silent when we're when we're when everything else is taken away from us we are we are it's only us and our thoughts so when it's only you and your thoughts all those terrible things start popping up you start thinking about them and that's why we distract ourselves because we don't like it we don't like the person that we really are um we don't like feeling um we we don't like the things that we're hearing like like there's so many times where i've been like oh like when i'm by myself and i'll I'll have this uh I'll have this I'll have this thought, this like terrible thought, and I'll be like, "Oh, like I can't. Like this is making me a bad person." Like, no, it's not making you a bad person. It's just showing you um it's just showing you what like 
Oh, Jojo, what's up? Is this a form of meditation or similar? Um, I say it is. It's definitely a form of meditation. I, I don't know if like it's meditation, but I, I just I just call it sitting in silence. Um, if that's like falls into the category, then, you know, I guess it could be. But um, but it it definitely is similar to that. And it, it's so it's so it's like back to my point it's just so beneficial because when you're allowed to just turn everything off think everything through let it flow out then you can get over these thoughts and it's like you can conquer them almost and once you're able to accept that you feel this way you've already gained another sense of strength you've already gained another um you you've already passed a level you've already broken through a barrier um, accepting that you have flaws, accepting the very fears um, and bad qualities about yourself. And it, and it doesn't even have to be a bad quality like, oh, I eat too much junk food, I do this. Or you could be thinking like, oh, I don't like, I'm, I want to give an example that's not so like horrific and horrendous, but I think you guys know what I mean. It's that deep, dark stuff that we don't like to say or that we would never tell anybody that we're thinking in our heads. And, you know, unfortunately, that leads to a lot of really terrible things that happen in today's society um, when people feel like they're not heard. Um, you know, it's just an expression. It's a reaction. And it's like when when somebody feels when somebody is so angry and so and just wants to express that sometimes that expression can lead to them shooting someone and killing them. And. You know, that's a very extreme example, but that's an example of somebody who wasn't, they weren't heard, they weren't, um, they felt like that was the only way where someone could understand the pain they felt in, in a weird psychological way, you know? Um, and so when people do these terrible things, like I know for me, when I was younger and it was, well, I was in middle school and high school and I was going through the toughest times of my life, um, that's when I acted out the most. I had the most, like when I was feeling the worst about myself, I would steal, I would um, skip class, I would like like talk back to my teachers, I talked back to my parents, I'd break stuff, I'd do all this just because I was like, I was like, oh, can I just like show them how angry I am? Can I just show them? And then if I show them like, and I wasn't like thinking this, but this is what it really was. And I was like, ah, like, I just want somebody to hear me. I want somebody to sit, sit down with me and be like, hey, man, I see what you're going through. Tell me how hard it is, you know? And unfortunately, in today's world, we don't get that. We don't get that from even our friends, even our family, even our closest people. Now, th those who are fortunate to get that, don't take that for granted and keep those people close to you in your life. Um, but the other the problem is is that unfortunately not a lot of us have that um and for me like even when i was like going through the hardest time i just got a mental diagnosis and i would tell my friends and it was just like i just became like like a joke it was like oh that's funny like ha 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 now you have this now you're now you're this person and it's like i just wanted to like like there, there's a certain type of person that gets in fights all the time. You know, if you get in a fight, it's like you really want to show someone how angry you are. You really want to like prove them. Um, but yeah, and true, but I'm just good at hiding my feelings. I mean, look, you can you can be good at hiding your feelings, but it's not necessarily like that's a healthy thing. And I don't mean to call you out like specifically, but hiding your feelings is not, is not a healthy thing because if you hide them, then they build up, they stack up on top of each other. And, but before you know it, you have all these feelings. You're like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to keep like, keep building up. Like, and all these things just pile up and you forget about this one. You forget about this one and this one, because you have this one and this one that you just added. And then it just, comes out in this big outburst and like your parents or your friends are like what is wrong with you you need to see a doctor are you going to therapy it's like nah dude you did like no one's listening to me i'm not no one feel no one hears me you know what i'm saying um and uh yeah yeah and i just like i have a really 
really big problem with um schools and uh doctors for diagnosing kids with depression and all of these and giving them pills and stuff and and all this because what what you're what you're not doing is helping you're not helping the problem you're you're masking the problem it's the same thing as someone who drinks or smokes to you know temporarily subdue the pain and it's like oh i gotta just take this pill every day well guess what we're not born on this earth in need of pills we're we're given human bodies um because we're meant to be able to withstand um the the things that go on and unfortunately as a human race we're suffering right now um by being not being compassionate with each other and not being accepting and loving of one another because it's cool not to be loving and it's cool just to do your own thing and um do all that and and not you know help out people you know we like to really stay on the internet and we like to glorify hate we like to glorify and really talk about everything that's going wrong so we can blame our problems on the world but in truth you know the problems happen from us who are talking about it um and it's it's tough because uh, it's it's so tough because like you know as a as a person who went through that as a person who um as a person who was on pills, as a person who was given every type of medication, like mental medication possible, um, none of it helped. And the reason none of it helped was because no one was actually trying to solve my problem. They were just trying to um, mask it, cover it up, act like it wasn't there. Um, you know, and like so many things like, like, I think the concept of like ADHD is also really, really ridiculous. And um, it's it just like, you know, we just, we need certain people with these, with these personalities. And it feels like everyone's now becoming a category. It's like, oh, you are this mental illness. You're this mental illness. You are this mental illness. And it's like, at what point are we going to realize that we are all different people and we all just need to be listened to and appreciated for the brains that we were given, um, in the first place. So, um, to anyone who is going through that, to anyone who is on pills, on all these things, and it's not working, just know that it's not the pills that are going to fix your life. It's it's really not. Um, and it's like, I, I, just, I just empathize with that so much because obviously I went through it um, and none of it worked. And now I'm off everything completely, I guess you could call it sober, and... Um, like life's sick, life's great because I'm able to express myself. And another way I'm able to do that, that I found is going on these live streams. Now, here's the thing is like, I would do these live streams if I had two people or if I had 2000 or 200,000 people. And the reason I would do that is because it's an expression. Um, so this is another way that I can express myself and feel like I'm being heard now. The good thing is, like, I do have a lot of people who are tuned into me and, like, really love what I say. So, um, yeah. But, I mean, I guess the moral of the story, y'all, is don't distract yourself. Um, find the root of your problem. Listen, listen to yourself. Uh, find people who want to listen to you, not people who want to mask your thing. Because a lot of times it just makes them feel uncomfortable. Um... So, yeah, <laughs> bro, I just went off, bro. I just went off. Um, I'm really worried, like, I'm really worried, like, when I start, you know, like, when I have, like, my albums and my, like, everything going on, like, I'm worried. <laughs> I'm just going to be in these interviews just, like, spazzing, dude. Like, like, when someone, like, when I start doing interviews, like, y'all, y'all aren't going to know what to do with me, bro. Like, like, they're going to. I think they're going to be great. I think it's, I'm going to say some awesome stuff. But, you know, I also accept the fact that, you know, I'll probably say something wrong. I'll probably say something wrong at one point. I'm human. Of, of course, it's bound to happen. But as long as I just keep speaking my mind, then, you know, there's going to be, like, I don't know, like, like I just, if, if the journey is, is to be fully conscious and, like, self-expressive, then I, I need to... I need to just do that and, you know, I'll deal with the repercussions as they come. But, you know, I, cause it's scary. Like if I, like my goal is to be able to just like say everything and like be able to go crazy or whatever. And, 
But like, I don't know, people might call me crazy one day, people might say you're this way or this this or whatever, but I just I'm I'm passionate and, and I and I love my purpose. I love what I'm here for. I love the reason I love the gifts God has given me and I plan on using them. And so and I plan on using them to my fullest. I'm not here to like half use my goals. Like I'm only gonna use it as so much where these people don't feel like they're I don't know. I'm going off, but you know, at some point, I gotta make a statement. I feel like I'm on, I'm on this, I'm on this planet for a reason, and I'm given this voice, and I'm given these talents, and and the ear that the ears that I have, the I'm given my eyes, and and everything. Like uh, these are metaphors for like like what I what I've been through, what I've seen, what I've heard, all the things that I've been through are are tools um, in order to get me to use that, like use use my negatives against against like those negatives that happen in the world like it's like um and that that's the other thing it's like in order for you to move forward and this is for everybody a lot of people a lot of people are just so caught up in their past they're so like oh my gosh this happened to me this happened to me i'm this way this terrible thing like it it could be the worst most terrible thing in the world but at the end of the day like you're not the only person who's gone through it. You're not. You really aren't. And when you can accept that and you can use that to empower you instead and be like, oh, I went through this terrible thing, but guess what? So so did millions, thousands of other people, young people too. If you're in your, I don't know, if you're, if you're an adult, if you're a kid, if, if you have had a tough past, a tough upbringing, you are meant to use it in order to inspire the other people who are through, um, who are going through the same thing. Um, because like I said, like you're not, you're I've said this before. You're not special in your, in your upbringing, in your troubles. You're not, there's somebody else that's gone through it and it may not be like to the T the most specific thing, but even if it is, even if you are the only person in the world who has gone through this one thing, um, by you sh- by you overcoming that that's an inspiration to so many people um and yeah i just like i i see all you guys like i i feel obligated to talk about these things because i see um how much you know my words affect you guys and i see you know from the cameos from the dms i get from the tattoos that you guys get of my lyrics like I feel a responsibility to y'all. I feel like I'm supposed to share the information that I have learned and share the things that I have gone through with you guys because it is is so important for me. Like, Like, I could easily be like, oh my goodness, all these terrible things happened in my life and I'm just gonna sit here and wallow in my own self-pity and pretend like I'm the only one in the world who has ever gone through a hard time. And... You know, on top of that, I want to make a segue to another thing I've been thinking about. And I'm sick. I'm sick of seeing people being like, like, it. look, it's, it's a nice idea. It's a nice idea to be like, oh, I want to be happy. Like, I'm chasing happiness. Like, but the reason I make that face is because that's such an unattainable goal. You are never going to be happy forever. And I just don't think happiness is the word because... You know, it's the it's the same phrase of like, what's joy without pain? What's what's sun without rain? You know, I didn't mean to be a rapper right there, but um, we need to go through hardships with this journey that I'm going on with this huge life shift. I am the happiest I've ever been, but that does not mean that I'm not going through anything. That does not mean that I still don't have days where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out, I'm panicking. It doesn't mean that all that goes away. You are not you we are not here to search for something that is just a clean one-way elevator to the top that doesn't exist. You have to take the steps and you have to fall a couple times. You're going to get tired. There's all this stuff. And for people to always just say, "I just want to be happy. I just want to be happy." It's like, "Yes, that's amazing. You should want that." But also, you have to understand that you are you have been given everything you need um, in order to achieve that, and it's about overcoming your your both your past and your present. Um, and no, none of the 
don't have to worry about the future because it hasn't happened yet and you can't get there unless you get through um the moment and but a lot of times our past can really really mess up our moments our our present moments because we'll be like so caught up in this idea that we we are um that we are entitled to feeling sorry for ourselves that we um defeat ourselves in the moment and we don't take that interview we don't do these things we like to beat ourselves up a lot we like to be like oh man i don't deserve this i'm not worthy of this of going out tonight i should just sit here and do nothing and like i'm not going to do this like i'm so sad that i'm not going to do all that it's like dude what it, what are you doing what are you doing you got to stop you got to snap out of it like the the world's not meant for that we're not supposed to do that um I I just I just hate seeing I just hate seeing so many and the reason I'm just like so may, maybe this isn't the like biggest issue in the world but it is an, is an issue with the people that um with you guys with you guys that are reaching out to me and asking me for advice and and all this stuff like it's an issue and it affects me a lot because I'm like I'm like oh my goodness the, it feels like the whole world when you guys are DMing me and and all this and I'm not saying to stop DMing me I I need I need you guys to tell me these things and I need you guys to keep opening up to me um because it it's what it's what gets us all is it's what gets us all through it um we're all we're all on this planet right now we're all one race and we got however many years to make a mark and are you going to just like let this like you're just going to let this pass be like ah it doesn't matter none of this matters whatever dude like we're going to die one day and like who cares? Like, who cares if I don't do this or do that? Or if, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm going to be dead and someone else will do it. Like, no, like, that's, that's stupid. It's really stupid. Um, and I don't mean to, like, <laughs> attack anybody, but it's it's not the right way to think. Um, Jeez. I'm just going off, bro. I haven't been on this live in a minute. I got a lot to say. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm amazing. I'm amazing. I'm fired up. I got some, I just heard just some great stuff going on in my life. Um, are you still friends with Brady? Yes. All those guys are my brothers for life. We all share history and we're all, we're all boys. Um, this music in the back is killing me, dude. Uh, man. <sighs> Look. I just, I just hate, I just hate seeing people sad. I hate it. I hate seeing people defeated. I think that's a better word. It's like, I hate seeing that. But that doesn't mean that I want everyone to pretend like it's okay. I don't. I, if anything, I need, I need my requirement of you guys is to keep, like, expressing yourself. But also... Don't express yourself on the internet so much, please, please stop, please stop being on, like, please stop tweeting your feelings and your emotion, please stop, stop, these people on the internet don't care for you, they'll rip you apart, you need to find somebody who you can really talk to, and a, a lot of times, like, ah, like, like, I, I get it, guys, like, this, like, the internet is, there's some good things about it. There are good people that use the internet, but there are so many bad things. It's such a, there, here's the thing, like, just as us human beings will attract, will be attracted to people who possess positive qualities that we admire and we relate to, we are the same way with negativity. We We are not, like, a lot of us will fall into these friend groups, will fall into these, these, like, this isn't, this is in the real world, like, like we'll we'll be attracted to people because we share a similar dislike for something and if all of us can feel like we're all we well if all of us can feel validated in our dislike and our disapproval for something or we can feel like oh this person sucks this person sucks this person sucks oh you also think that too well that makes me feel like I'm okay to think that because all y'all are thinking it um there are negative things about that that we are attracted to people so when you're looking at these group chats, when you're looking at these people online, all these, you know, you, 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 fans are amazing and, you, and stan culture is like, is, is, is 
cool. It's cool. Like there's there's cool parts of it, but um it's very it's very hard when people um it's it's just very hard when uh you know, everyone just kind of wants to uh, I don't know. I don't know. A lot like I just don't what I'm trying to get at is I don't I don't want people to associate with people who think it's okay to be um this way or or okay to have pity for yourself and all this other stuff like definitely have empathy and sympathize but there's a key difference between um allowing yourself to be um it's easy it's easy for your for that line to be blurred and um yeah i just i just i'm i'm i pray for you guys man i pray that all you guys find peace and that you find that serenity and that you find that person and i i I want all you guys to i want every single one of you to be to be on the right path and feel like you're progressing because it's not about the results that we get in our lives it's about the process that we at, at which we get these things and it's about how how we do it um it's really easy conflict is so easy it's the easiest thing. It, it takes no brain. It takes no skill. It takes no intelligence at all to start a fight. It takes no intelligence to go up to somebody and have a conflict with them. Say, I don't like this. I don't like you. I don't like blah, blah, blah. I don't like this. It's so easy. But what's hard is to have empathy for people. What's hard is, you know, in life, we love the, e- the easiest thing we can do is build a wall. Easiest thing to do is build a wall, but it's really hard to build a bridge. You know, we should be building bridges and not building walls. Um, (laughs) I didn't even mean it to have that reference, but I mean, it's true. And I stand by that statement because, you know, are we trying to divide ourselves really that much? Are we trying to be so closed off and and standoffish and territorial with each other or do we want to help each of us do we want to help each other out do we want to offer um ourselves to other people um man like i just would like i just wish i just wish we saw i just wish we weren't living in such fear and honestly fear just comes from the internet a, a lot of it Obviously, fear fear comes from life in general, but, you know, since we're on the topic of the internet, it's, like, it's easy to go on the internet. Like, if I go on Twitter right now, I'm going to think the world's falling apart. I really am. Like, because I've never seen anything that's, like, there's the occasional funny video, but then it's, like, this, this is going wrong. This is going wrong. It's, like, everywhere go, like, I don't know why it's specifically Twitter. Um, I mean, Instagram, too. Instagram, too, honestly. Um, But that that's the problem is like there's there's there should be a balance of um of this is what we need to address we need to convict to this person of this of this action or this thing that they did or or we need to address something that's a problem but it it almost seems like on twitter twitter and sometimes on instagram these things are glorified and and made and almost used as like like for young people to read all the terrible things that are going on in the world all the time it's it's tough because it's like then you feel like oh what's the point it's like i and that's really that's really um it's really tough you gotta follow more positive people i do trust trust me trust me i don't follow anybody who's like bleh on twitter i Honestly, I'll follow everybody because I don't even really go on Twitter unless I got a tweet. Um, and I'll read, like, my mentions. But, you know, right now my mentions are pretty positive. People say nice things about me, and I I like to read them because I'm like, ah, that's nice. I like to respond to fans, but I don't go on my timeline anymore. I don't do any of that. I go on Instagram, and I follow my friends, and I follow people I know or people uh, that inspire me. So every time I go on my feed, I'm like, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, cool, awesome, good experience. Um, but yeah, I wonder how many of y'all could go a day without using your phone. 
Seriously. Try it. Challenge. Um, I challenge you guys to do that. Are you going to make more music? Nah. Nah, I'm done with the whole music thing. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> who inspires you? Uh, so many people inspires me. <laughs> so many people inspires me. Um, y'all inspire me. My family inspires me. Um, like if I'm at the gym, people at the gym inspire me. Basketball players inspire me. Uh, video games inspire me. Um, video games with stories, that is. Like, when I, uh, when there's, like, a storyline and, like, a character has to overcome something, I, I pick up on these things. Or, like, certain TV shows inspire me. Um, playing music inspires me. Messing around inspires me. Like, when you're just having, having fun is, like, the biggest thing, dude. Like, just having fun, you'll get the most inspiration from that. Doing something you love. Um, what time is it in America? Oh, it's 3 a.m. where I'm at. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. Yeah. Inspired me to get a Rubik's Cube. Now I can't put it down. Love that. Keep doing that. It's such a good exercise. Um... Uh, well, I think I just about said everything I gotta say, <laughs> but yeah, well, I miss y'all, man. I miss, I miss seeing your faces and I promise the next time I see you, it'll be, well, very much worth it. It'll be very much worth it. Um, I'm just preparing, and I'm in hiberna hibernation. Um. <laughs> it's it's like why don't we? It's like <laughs> they all they all all the why don't we guys uh stop posting on social media? And they all posted like the same videos. This very like iconic thing. That's like kind of where I'm at right now. It's like like taking a break. To work on my music, to work on my whatever. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm, I'm at. But, I mean, I will be present on here. I will post stuff when I feel like it. But I don't, like, I don't, I don't post, like, I don't, I haven't, I don't feel a need to, like, be active on here. Like, I really don't. I don't I don't feel a need to be. And what I what I mean me saying that is like I'm only on here. I only do these things when I want to. I only get on social media, I only go on Twitter when when I want to. Um a lot of times like people want to go on there just cuz they're bored or they're distracted. It's like I don't go on there. I labeled uh my text messages, my calls and my FaceTimes is all in one folder. And it's labeled other people. And then my all social media is under is in one folder under the globe app. So I only use under the globe emoji. So whenever I go and I want to say something or check on what's going on in the world, I go to that. But before I do it, it's like I'm like, hmm, do I really need to see this right now or or not? Um Oh. You know what I want to do, actually? I have some, like... I have, like, probably, like, the best, like, funny faces in the world. I want to have, like, a contest online. <laughs> like, like, I don't think y'all understand, like, how good I am at this shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't think y'all get it. Uh, someone said, who are your favorite artists right now? Um, favorite artists? 
Dude, I love um this song by 0708 called I Laugh When I'm With Friends But I'm Sad When I'm Alone. I think it's a great song. I've been listening to the Mac Miller album, Circles. I've been listening to... I've been listening to Aretha Franklin. She's awesome. Uh, I've been listening to this band called... I don't know if it's a band, but it's a group called Black Pumas. They have a song called Colors, which is fire. Um, what else? There's a... Oh, Lauren Hill, dude. Dude, I've been making... Like... Dude, Lauren Hill is so good. I I have a confession, like I consider myself like 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 knowledge in like hip hop. I never listened to the miseducation of Lauren Hill, and that is one of the best albums I've ever heard. I'm pissed. I'm pissed I didn't listen to it. Been listening to a lot of Kid Cudi. Um But a lot of myself. Been listening to Bruce Springsteen. My dad always played Bruce Springsteen, so I feel like, like, around the house. So I'm trying to listen to, like, the old stuff that was, like, that, like, subconsciously was influencing me. Um, B. Sam Brent Fies. Someone told, one of my friends played me some of his stuff. It's very interesting. Um, listen to Brent Fies. I will. I will. Um, what else do I listen to? Janae, I, yeah, that goes fire. Listen to, uh, 2088 with, uh, Janae, Iko, and Big Sean. Fire. Kehlani, Kehlani's cool. What have I really been listening to? I'm trying to think. Got this whole playlist. Uh, um, Jack Harlow had the What's Poppin' song. That's in rotation. Um, dude, I don't even, I, I don't even know, like, Kanye, a lot of Kanye. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really just about it. Here's the, I, I haven't really been listening to a lot of music. Um, like, I don't listen to it as much as you guys might think I do. I, I play it a lot. I make it a lot, but, um, I don't listen to it as much, but when I do listen to it, it's really nice. Oh, one of my favorite songs right now is, um, uh, Blue World by Mac Miller. It's like, I just think the beat is so crazy. It's so crazy. Like, it's so sad. Like, you know, I wasn't like the biggest Mac Miller fan in the whole entire world, but, you know, I always respected him, and I always thought that, you know, when he put out an album, it was, he always went for something, he always went for a concept, and wanted to put something out that was reflective of where he was at the time, and I was listening to his new album, Circles, and I was like, I was, I, it was sad because it's so good, I was like, man, this is like, this is so good, it sucks that, like, you're, like, you may, I feel like it's, one of his best ever and i'm just like man it sucks that you know you couldn't keep going um and yeah it's really unfortunate um i never even i never even posted about kobe because i was just like i was like this is ridiculous man like that one really messed me up it messed me up bad. I didn't even like know what to say. I was like, I got, I was like, I could, I don't know. Like, it's just like he was. It just it didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. It's like he went to church that morning. I was like, I was like, man. But one of the things I learned is that, you know. You know, just because, just because something terrible happens, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean it was God's plan, but, but he can always make something greater 
out of something terrible that's happened is what I've learned. Um, so, yeah. I just, oh man, I was on the way to the airport to fly it. Oh, I went to I went to a college this weekend. I went to college this weekend, but on the way to the airport to get on the flight, I passed that wall. I was in L.A. The wall it was like the big mural of Kobe and uh, and Gigi. And uh, I was listening to Mac Miller. So I was listening to Mac Miller, and I saw a thing of Kobe, and I was looking out the window. I was like, "Oh my gosh, like what kind of world are we living in right now? This is insane." Um, but I went to college this weekend, and I stayed with, uh, you know, one of my friends, and I stayed in the dorm. First night, I slept on the floor, like the hard floor. My back was not agreeing with that, um, and I played basketball. I uh, we went to the studio because he's in school for uh, music engineering and producing and stuff, so we had the studio from like midnight to 6 a.m., so we went in there and did a little thing. Um, and that was really fun. And I went to the bar. That was sick. Um, I went, got a little pilt. <laughs> and, um, it's, I just know, it was just, it was the weekend with the boys, dude. <laughs> Yo, like, it amazed me, like, I was in this college, right, and we went, we were going, we were going to the, meet up with some people to then go to the bar, and we met, we were in this, like, this girl's dorm, they were, like, they are like, five girls or six girls, and it was, <laughs> I thought it was, like, so, it was just so, I don't know, it was just funny to me, like, all the things that, uh, <laughs> they were, like, like, concerned about, and, like, everything that was, like, going on, like, it was, like, awesome, I was, like, I'm, like, I'm over here thinking about how I can, like, save the world, and, like, they're, like, they're, like, how are we gonna sneak Joey into the bar, like, he doesn't even have a fake, <laughs> I'm, like, yo, this is crazy, like, <laughs> um, yeah, I got into a bar, went to the back, um, had a good time, it was cool, it was really cool, had some food, um, I don't know, man. Col college is cool. It's not for your boy, but, <laughs> um, so you have a fake. I do not have a fake. See, here's the thing with me is like, I don't go, I don't like go out of my way to like get intoxicated. Like, I just don't feel like I need to. So like, but if I'm going to be able to be let into a bar for free, then I'm like, yeah, I'll go. Like, why not? Um, this is an, this is an opportunity that has come my way, so I'm going to take advantage of it. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't have a fake. I, if I did, I'd be honest. I'd tell you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm turning 21 this year anyway, so that's crazy. Whoa. Jeez, bro. 21 in a, in February, March, April, May, June. four months. Yeah, four months. <laughs> Did you pull the Do You Know Who I Am card? No, I didn't pull... No. No, I didn't do that. But um, when you're in college, well, my friends, his roommate knew one of the bouncers, and so they let us in the back. And, like, you know, here's the dope part about college is that I wasn't in this world of, like, I am this person, and I have to give everyone my L.A. resume of, like, oh, like, this is Connor Michael Smith. He's... He was in the group in real life, and, you know, now he's doing his thing, and then now this, like, it's, like, no one knew anything about me, and it was freaking awesome. I was just, like, walking on campus. I went to the, uh, um, the dining hall in the morning, and, like, it's, it was great. I was, like, oh, I could just, like, live this life for, for this weekend. It was, it was fun. It was really fun. So did Joey get in? No, he didn't. Joey got denied. <laughs> Joey got denied, and it was a tragedy because, because, <laughs> because the guys and the girls had to split up because the girls went to some other bar, and then we went to like, <laughs> we went to another one, and it was just, at that point it was just me uh, and two of my other friends. So it was like it was just the boys. 
Um, but I got 14 seconds. I love you guys so much. Hope you are doing well. Say your prayers and spread love and joy. Love all of you. Peace. Peace. Peace.